Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I wanted to show you a Newton's Law of Cooling Differential Equation solution. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do those types of problems. Uh, I wanted to show you this problem because this is actually one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. If you haven't already checked that out, there's a link down in the description below and in the pinned comment where you can learn more about that and go get yourself a copy. But I want to show you exactly how to use this Newton's Law of Cooling formula from that study guide. And I'm coming out with new videos every week showing you how to do different things in calculus. So if you want better grades in calculus, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that bell icon so you can join the Jake's Math Lessons community and we can keep crushing it together all term. All right, well, let's go ahead and just jump on into this problem. So here's the problem we're going to be doing. In a murder investigation, the temperature of the corpse was 32.5 degrees at 1.30 p.m. and 30.3 degrees an hour later. Normal body temperature is 37 degrees and the temperature of the surroundings was 20 degrees. When did the murder take place? So I've already written down here the Newton's Law of Cooling formula that I mentioned from my study guide. Again, if you haven't checked that out, there's a link down below. So typically the first place you want to start with these is to first, you know, kind of breaking down this formula, first of all. The capital T represents the temperature of whatever object you're looking at. In this case, it's going to be the corpse. Um, the little t is the time that has passed. So in this case, you know, uh, you know, presumably how long it's been since the murder occurred. Um, and then k is some unknown constant we're going to have to figure out. And then TS is the temperature of the surroundings. So in this case, we actually know the temperature of the surroundings was 20 degrees. So what we can do right off the bat is plug in 20 for this TS here. So we'll start with that. So once we've done that, what we actually want to do is do a substitution. We want to introduce a new variable. So basically what you're going to do is whatever's in the parentheses here, the T minus whatever number, you're going to say that that is Y. So we're going to say y equals t minus 20. And what that tells us basically um, is we can rewrite this differential equation in a little bit simpler terms because we can put that y in there and rewrite this as dy dt instead of dt dt equals k times y. So now this gives us a little bit simpler differential equation. And what we also need to figure out then is the kind of initial condition so that we have uh, an initial value problem essentially. So what that means is we need to figure out what y is when t is zero. Well, when t is zero, basically when the murder occurred, the body would have been whatever this normal body temperature is, 37 degrees. So if the temperature was 37 degrees, but we know that y is the temperature minus 20, this y should be 37 minus 20. So that would actually give us 17 for that. So now we have right here dy dt equals k times y and then y of 0 equals 17, an initial value problem. So then we can actually use another formula that's on my integral calculus cheat sheet, which is the kind of general form of for exponential growth and exponential decay. So that formula tells us if we have an initial value problem like this, that the, the solution to this, in, this differential equation that satisfies this initial condition would just be y of t equals our initial value, so 17, times e to the kt. So we know that this is going to be the solution to this differential equation. Obviously, we don't know what k is yet. We still need to solve for that. But we have a nice kind of starting point. So what we need to do now is figure out another point that this equation needs to go through. Basically another measure of what the temperature of this corpse was at another time. So we know that the temperature was 32.5 degrees at 1.30 and then 30.3 degrees an hour later. So that would tell us at 2.30. But the problem with those two pieces of information is we don't actually know how long that was after the murder, right? So we, we don't have, this doesn't actually give us points that would plug into this because we don't know what the T is that would correspond with those two temperatures. So what we kind of have to do is instead of knowing, you know, exact points, exact t temperature and time combinations that would plug into this, we, we don't know the time. So what that means is basically, Let's just say that at 1.30 p.m. it's been, 
you know, however much time, let's say T hours, right? So our first point is just gonna be some unknown amount of time at 1.30 p.m. and the temperature was 32.5 degrees. So again, 32.5 degrees minus 20 tells us that Y at that time was 12.5, okay? So that basically is one point that we kind of know of in this equation. The other thing now is, or the other kind of piece of information, we know one hour later, so if T, if our time is now whatever this time was plus one, right, one hour later, we know that the temperature was 30.3 degrees. So 30.3 degrees minus 20 tells us that Y at that time was 10.3. So now these are basically the two points that we want to kind of plug into this equation that we have for Y to figure out what our K is. So plugging each of these into this equation is gonna give us, we're gonna put T in for T. Well, that already has been done basically. Um, and actually probably the correct way to think about this was to say T zero. So it's actually some specific time, not just, you know, the variable T. So putting in T zero for T would, would just give us that. Putting in 12.5 for Y would give us 12.5 over here on the left side of our equation. And then we'll put in these two values as well. So we'll get 17 E to the K times T zero plus one. And then that equals 10.3. So with these two equations, we have, you know, two equations with two variables, right? We have a K and a T zero in there that we don't know. So two equations, two variables, we should be able to solve for them. You know, really in this case, we don't, we don't really actually need the K because what the question's asking us is when did the murder take place, right? If we figure out what T zero is, T zero is just the amount of hours after the murder took place. So if we figure out what T zero is, that actually is gonna tell us, we just have to count back that many hours from 1.30 PM to figure out when the murder took place. So. We have this system of equations, basically, two variables, two equations. We don't actually care what K is. We really just need to figure out what T0 is. So to solve for T0, what we can do is we can take one of these equations and solve for K and then plug that into the other equation. So let's just take this first one, for example. We want to get K all by itself, okay? So first we would divide both sides by 17. That would give us 12.5 over 17 equals e to the k times t0. We would then take natural log of both sides, which would cancel the e. And then to get the k by itself, we would then divide both sides by t0, which would cancel that and just give us k equals natural log of 12.5 over 17, all over t0. So now what we can do is take this and plug it in for k here, okay? So doing that tells us we have 10.3 equals 17 times E to the power of natural log of 12.5 over 17 all over T0 times T0 plus one. And now same kind of idea, we wanna get T0 all by itself. We wanna solve for T0. So to do that, same idea, we would divide both sides by 17 and then take natural log of both sides to cancel out the E. So that would give us natural log of 10.3 over 17 equals everything that we have up in the power here. So natural log of 12.5 over 17 over T0 times T0 plus one. Then what we can do is distribute this into the parentheses here. So that would just give us natural log of 12.5 over 17 over T0 times T0. So those T zeros would actually just cancel out. Just giving us natural log of 12.5 over 17. And then this thing times one is just gonna be itself, right? We're just gonna get plus natural log of 12.5 over 17 over T0. And that equals what we had over here still. So 
So now to get T0 by itself, we can subtract this from both sides to move it over there. And then we would multiply the T0 over. So we would get all this times T0. And then we would divide all this back over to that side. So that would just give us this natural log of 12.5 over 17. These are quite a doozy of a fraction, isn't it? And then divide all that over. So we're just gonna get T0 equals natural log of 12.5 over 17, all divided by this, this whole, you know, this natural log minus that natural log. And doing that is gonna give us T0 is about 1.588. So, we're not quite done yet. There's a little more to figure out here. Before I show you the kind of final step though, please, if you're finding this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below, hit the subscribe button. And if it's making sense so far, do me a favor and drop a comment below that just says, got it so far. So now what we need to do, now that we figured out what our T0 is, 1.588, remember T0 represented this, uh, basically the, the time that had passed since the murder took place at this first measure we had of, um, of temperature right so basically the murder would have taken place t0 hours before this first time that we actually took the temperature of the corpse so the murder would have happened 1.588 hours before 1 30 p.m so basically if we work our way back 1 30 p.m take away 1.588 hours um you know we could figure out exactly how many minutes that is by just doing 1.588 times 60 and doing that would actually tell us uh, 95.3 minutes, basically. So if we start at 1.30 p.m., work our way back 95 minutes, that would tell us the time. So 1.30 p.m., work our way back 90 minutes would take us to noon. And then if we go, you know, 5.3 minutes further back, that would be like 11.54 a.m. And, you know, some seconds. But really the, the idea is, you know, getting to the nearest minute is probably good enough. So we know that the murder would have taken place at this time. So that's it. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. Be sure to join the Jake's Math Lessons community so we can keep getting you better grades in calc all term together. Keep crushing it together. Thanks and see you next time.